Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker Enhanced Edition with me, Brigadon. So, I don't think that I did this my last attempt against uh, the spawn. Uh, let's see. I found something in the dungeon that makes me doubt your sincerity. You see anxiety in the dragon's pearly eyes. You have the right to doubt, but be assured that my intentions are pure. I hide nothing from you. Tell me what you found, and I will clear away your doubts. Look at these rings. The captor thought that you served the spawn of Robogug, just like his pet demon served him. I recognize this sharp mind and his peculiar wit. His joke has an explanation, and I shall give it to you. The heroes who went down into the dungeon to defeat the spawn have all died, and it fed upon their pain. In the same way, the captor nourished the demon by serving him his own soul. He wishes on me the same fate, just as he wrote on these rings, that I should go down to fight the spawn, only to vanish and become its food. I really wanted to find all the uh, artifacts for the fallen heroes, so I could see what's going on with the dragon, see if he's truly... So I feel like if you find all four of them, I don't know if you're going to fight him or not. But there has to be something there. Especially if it, when I confront him, it's anxiety inducing. Like, he's up, he's up to something. When I play through the uh, standalone DLC, well, because you might have to do it several times. Because in the, the standalone DLC, it's not guaranteed that you'll find the um, the notes on each floor leading up to the boss. That's only in the, the campaign. So it could take several attempts, but it saves your progress uh, each time you play through the DLC. So think of the DLC as like a standalone story where you are the multiple heroes going and journeying into the uh, the depths. I do what I must. So whenever you find a note or something, it's saved for your next character that you send down there. Anyway, we have the quest where we still need to talk to Kimo. Uh, Kimo gives you a dreary nod. Good day. Tell me what, tell me what went wrong between you two. You had a fight? I don't know. Everything went so well after our first date. We spent every day together. We talked, we gathered flowers, we watched the clouds pass by. And then one evening she said goodbye and hid herself inside her tree. She hasn't shown her she hasn't shown her face or said a word to me ever since, no matter how many times I've asked. What do you mean she hid in her tree? Kimo heaves another heavy sigh. She's a dryad. Her body and spirit are tied to an oak. She takes care of it and protects it. I met her when I was in the forest, trying to find my way to the settlement. Show me the map where to find her. But you can't help. Her heart knows no mercy. You cannot change her wood my her wooden mind. <laughs> Alright, let's go talk to the dryad. Cause you know, as a king, I don't have more more pressing issues. Than wandering the countryside trying to play matchmaker. But I guess if you have if it profits me in some way, I don't see why I wouldn't do that as king. And he can make me some powerful stuff. Actually, I don't know what his masterwork is. I think it's a bow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his masterwork is a bow. Plus four military. Failure. He's not good at that. Um, we have a few days. I mean, it's an opportunity. Worst thing you do is really mess it up, right? If I really wanted to, I could save Scum until he uh, succeeded. You recognize a dryad that you saw some time ago with a drunken satyr. Her skin glistens like polished wood, and her head is crowned with a mane of grass and leaves. Here you are. I knew you'd come and try to try and change my mind. Kimo talks about you every day, you know. Kimo is a talented craftsman, but ever since you rejected him, he's lost off. How did you end up here? What do you mean, end up? I live here. 
I grew up in this forest together with my magnificent oak. If there's anyone who's ended up here, it's you. <laughs> uh, why have you rejected Kimo? The Dryad Shrugs. Maybe I just grew tired of him. I don't even know. He's so two-dimensional. There's no intrigue to him. Everything he does is so predictable. All the flowers, all the compliments. I've had enough, thank you. Ikimo's a talented craftsman, but ever since you rejected him, he's lost all inspiration. His gift is going to waste. Please, let him see you and talk to you, at least in the name of art. The face sighs and rolls her eyes. I'm sick and tired of this. Why did fate pick me to be sacrificed to art? Oh well, you win. The artist can come back. It's not like I've got anything better to do around here. Easy peasy. I'm off. And I did try fighting the spawn of Robogugs more off camera between episodes, and I had one really good attempt. Um, I want to say we got him down to like three quarters health, but then I ran all my buffs got taken off. I couldn't do anything else. Um, it helped out quite a bit when I took off or turned off Piranha Strike and like power attack on Reg and everything. Time to search for the spot to rest. So there is some potential there to beat him, uh, but I feel like you're on a time limit. There is no official time limit in the fight, but once all of your buffs are gone, I mean, you don't really have a chance. Kimo smiles at you absentmindedly. Good day. I've had a chat with your dryad. And? The elf's fingers are twisted into a knot. Go to her. She's waiting for you. It... it cannot be. Thank you, Don Victus. You are welcome. Is there anything to talk to Shrell about? Doesn't seem that way. Alright. Back to the capital. We're gonna get a kid. Yeah, we are going to continue our kingdom upgrades in preparation for the uh, the trials to come. Resting would be nice, don't you think? What am I doing? It is the oh here it is. Make sure on the other quests currently. I do have some companion quests, but we'll take care of that later on. I don't think there's a time limit for those. There might be. Well, Octavia's, I don't think so. Reg's, maybe. Regardless, I'm not going to fret about it. Whatever. I'm only missing out on experience if I don't complete it. Did I... Let's see if... Or they knew the storyteller. Yeah, let's upgrade. Well, hold on. Do I have anyone else that's closer to being... Level 9. Hmm, that's pretty good. We build one of our villages into a town. Oh, so I have to... Okay, that's a little annoying. General wants to talk. High Priest wants to talk. And the Gambler. Don Victus. It's all gone. The idols around the capital that we chopped down. Uh, they were some kind of security walls or seals. Now there are weird portals where they stood. And what's coming out of them... Jod shudders and shivers. 
barely breathing out the last word. It's an abomination. The monsters are stalking the area, killing people and devastating small villages. Some wizards are demanding that the Magister to return the idols where they belong. They believe the idols can somehow drive away the monsters. I do not like this solution. We must face this evil steadfast, and never try to defeat one dark magic with another. Our army is powerless, our army is powerless against the monsters. Our soldiers are trained to fight in the open, not to track monsters through a thicket. If only your highness could appear everywhere at once to repel each attack. But no, we must order the warden to call upon the people to resist. Gather the hunters, pathfinders, and those who know the thicket. We shall stand united. I don't remember dealing with any idols. <laughs> But I'm sure that I did. Please accept my congratulations, your highness. It's under your guidance that we have raised a strong army. An invincible one by local standards. Is it though? Because we can't take care of the monsters that Jod was just talking about. But whatever. Who could have imagined that such a young country would have such a powerful military force? I'm proud I could prove myself in the service of such a worthy ruler as you. The Swordmasters respect your army. They are not bound by any obligation to the major houses and would like to join us. They know we expect many battles to come, which promises a chance at glory and an opportunity to prove themselves. I understand them well. This is why the Swordmasters have offered to, o to open a military school in the capital. For me, this is no little matter of pride. It means that Lady Aldori's lessons were not lost on me. That's great news. Thank you. Yeah, the, the credit goes for you. I was only doing my duty, Your Highness, and I'm proud I managed to maintain the Kingdom's honor. I have nothing at present that requires your attention, but I brought one of the military advisors who may have an interesting offer. Romello. Captain Romello gives you a sneaky wink. Reporting for duty. It's good to see you in good health. Your first and second crossbow troops have finished training and equipping. Your ba Ballastair squads Ballastair? Is that right? are receiving their heavy weapons today. I'd love to see the local bandits' faces when they see your troops in their new formations. I have a message from my employers. My company is eager to open a proving ground to test our new products. Some are far away from Alkenstar and its industrial spies, and some are protected by a reliable and influential ally, able to safeguard the factory's property and its secrets. Your Highness, you seem to be a respectable person to deal with. Would you like to open a small manufacturing center in your domain? It'd be to your benefit. You should think about it. Yeah, I don't see why not. Kimo, what's up, man? Bulwark. That's the wooden shield. That we've seen already. But money is money. Do I have anything? Portal Beasts. He has no chance of taking care of it. He has a 25% chance of taking care of it. What does this do? Economy and relations. Is that worth doing right now? I think instead what I should be doing so do I I don't remember if I have to actually do this myself or not I think I do need to do that myself Alright, max rank for the general, plus two to community, four to divine, three to arcane. Oh, he succeeded, cool. Five economy, three relations and espionage. Minister wants to talk, Lindsay is terrified. Regent wants to talk, Master of Pain. Amazing discovery. Not good enough. 
Right, let's talk to these people first. Lizzie's eyes glitter and her nostrils flare with rage. For some reason, she speaks in a whisper. Such, such insolence. Such unforgettable, monstrous, unimaginable insolence. What happened, Lindsay? The throne. The royal throne. It... Lindsay stops whispering and silently points her finger to the far side of the throne room. You raise your eyes. The place where the royal throne once stood is now empty. This is... unexpected. I'm surprised by your self-control. If I were you, I'd go on a rampage. Shameless scum. How could they go and rob the royal, royal palace with the king still alive and well? In fact, our case is blatant and extraordinary, but hardly exceptional. Word on the streets is the local population has become sick and tired of thieves. They break into people's homes, bypass the locks and latches, and steal everything they can. And now the scum is, has the guts to meddle with royal property. We need to sort this out before they steal the whole kingdom in one brick at a time. And we need to get back your throne. It's shameful. Lindsay regains control of herself and continues in a low whisper. I really hope your people here won't go wagging their tongues and spreading filthy rumors. In your opinion, where should I begin this investigation? Yeah, what are my guards doing? Lindsay flings her arms up. Well, you weren't on the throne at the time it was stolen, right? And our guards are trained to guard people, not furniture. The bard gives you a faint smile. Sure, if the throne was stolen with you still sitting on it, things would be much worse. That's not much consolation, though. Yeah, in your opinion, where should I begin this investigation? You should start with interrogating potential witnesses. I think the captain of the guard was in the palace when it happened. He was the one who discovered the throne was missing, at least. Then he should go to the city. I heard the smith was robbed recently, too. Maybe he can give you some clues. Also, if I were you, I'd talk to the trader. He might have some hints as to who may be selling stolen goods. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to visit the innkeeper. Who better to glean information from any troubled locals finding themselves in need of a shoulder to cry on? Oh, if I manage to catch this thief. Lindsay shakes her head. Whatever your upcoming plans were, retrieving the throne must be your top priority. I dread to think how loud our neighbors will laugh if they learn of this disgrace. In due time. Alright, let's go talk to some people. Let's see, do you know where... Excuse me, do you know where stolen goods are sold? Has of squints cunningly. How very polite. You do not ask me directly. But no, I am not involved in such shady dealings. Although the local traders sometimes claim otherwise. Some say that anything that's lying about will be stolen in this city, but then cannot be found for sale. You're not the first to ask after stolen goods. Many hope to find on the black market what precious things were stolen from their homes. But alas... It would seem the thieves have their own ways of getting rid of the stolen goods. Hmm. Alright, Burdell. Let's see, have you heard about the thefts plaguing, plaguing in the city? Burdell frowns. Heard. Your Highness, I myself am the victim of those thieves. Stole my tools, right from under my very nose. I was in the backyard, getting coal for the furnace, and I heard some noise inside. I ran in, and the thief jumped right into a magic portal and vanished. I didn't even get a good look. All right, so they use a portal. I'm there. Let's talk to the guard, or the captain of the guard. Why don't you explain why you're staring at me like that? Oh, uncle, when are you gonna change that old armor? The magic beast crumpled it so badly, it makes me cry to look at it. Oh, you still have a lot to learn. If only you knew how many times it saved my life in that battle. Highland turns to you. Greetings, your highness. 
Lindsay said it was you who discovered that the throne was missing. The captain grows gloomy. Yes, your highness. He keeps silence for a moment and continues, obviously embarrassed. Actually, your highness, please don't think me a fool or a drunkard. As I walked to the throne room, at first I thought it was a vision and didn't think much of it. Well, I thought I saw your throne in the corridor and it was running away. Not by itself, of course. I just couldn't see who was carrying it. Perhaps someone really tiny had gotten underneath it. And my, and my, how they ran. It seemed the throne turned the corner by itself, but the sight was strange beyond belief, so I thought I was simply too tired and had started seeing things. A moment later, when I discovered it was really missing, I rushed after it, but it vanished into thin air. Maybe it was, you know, magic. I don't know if y'all can hear my cat snoring in the background, but he's, uh... Snoring pretty good. He's resting up to keep his uh, dexterity and strength where they need to be. Okay, sorry for the edit. I got an infinite loading bug trying to go into the tavern. I think that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Uh, but ever since the power cut out on me when I was trying to record my fight against the spawner of Rovagug, uh, this game has had a lot of problems. In order for me to launch it, I have to minimize it when it be first starts loading in the main menu. And I can't open up the game again until the main menu has finished its pan sequence and nothing else is happening. If I do, it freezes and I have to uh, either sign out or restart my computer to use my computer again. Um, never had any troubles with the game, any loading problems before until the power cut out on me. And uh, now it's now it's a real pain in the butt. I've done everything I could think. I've I set my launch options to borderless. I've tried playing the game in borderless. None of that helps. Um, I've tried verifying my game files. I've reinstalled the game. You know, if if you can think of it, I've probably done it. So hopefully, I can load into the tavern without trouble here. Then we can continue this darn quest. So now I'm gonna be nervous every time I go through a loading sequence. I really want the ring that he has on. I'm off. Alina makes a curtsy like a lady in waiting. Welcome, your highness. Alina, I need to find a rare book. Do you know where, the, where in the city I should look? You've probably asked the vendors, haven't you? If not, uh, then do that. And if you have, um... Oh, I know who you should ask. Talk to Verdell, the blacksmith. He's quite a reader. Can't live a day without a book. Oh yeah, what's uh, what's new around here? Well, I was right when I said that Patox is full of shameless foxes dressed like people. Lately, there's so many folks from Patox. They're more than mosquitoes in the spring. And they're, suck and they're sticking their noses in everywhere. I heard there's been a number of thefts in town. Do you know anything about it? Of course I heard about it, your highness. Many houses have been robbed. And, and here's what's strange. No pick locks, no broken windows. How do the scoundrels get inside, hun? Those thieves are real masters of getting into other people, people's houses, and they steal whatever they find. At one house they stole the silverware, and at another one they left the money but took the children's toys. Strange thieves. Alright, let's see if, uh, I don't know if we ever finished the story with Enorio Eight Eyes. Okay, I think we finished it. Well, here's uh, hoping we don't get locked in again. Right, back to the throne room. I'll do one more upgrade, and then I'll call it an episode, because I do have to edit. Thanks to the uh, infinite loading bug. We arrested a spy, a mercenary from Daggermark. He, had, he identified his client for us, but it turns out she wishes to go over to us and save herself from her, from her old master. I don't trust her. She's betrayed one master. She's bound to do it again. We could take her hostage. We could even use magic to probe her mind. But, but, but both methods are unreliable. And besides, magic is bad for the brain. I suppose we should set a trap. Let us feed her a lie and see where she takes the bait. Do you understand what I suggest? 
Yeah, send her in the wrong direction and follow her. Haiku nods. She's lying to us. We'll have to lie to her, but our lies will be more convincing. Gosh, I hope so. I'd like to ask for your I'd like to ask you for advice, Don Victus. Two clans from the swamps are arguing over a meadow. Solid fertile ground is very valuable in the marshes, especially when you have so many mouths to feed. The clan elders decided to determine the owner by a long-standing tradition. Here's the essence of it. Ten armed men from each clan will face each other in the meadow. The first clan to lose all its fighter re fighters relinquishes its claim to the land. It's a cruel tradition, but they've been following it for many generations. Even if we prohibit the tradition, it'll only make them angrier, and they'll seek to settle their scores by other means. Their way of life shouldn't be disturbed. You let them fight, according to, according to their tradition. Trying to cancel a centuries-old tradition by a decree would be like trying to empty their swamp with a bucket. It'll be, it'll be many years before they're prepared to change their ways. Back in, buddy. What's going on, man? All right. Let's see about. Assigning people to these projects. I don't really want to put her on this. Um, we have a little while before we have to do it. Alright, we'll do this, then we'll see what all we got going on, then we'll call it an episode. I don't want to push it too far. Two loyalty, four stability, three espionage, three culture. Project complete. Lindsay the Storyteller. Eureka. We need more than that. Alright, let's talk to Lindsay the Storyteller. Then we'll call an episode. And that's that. And then King Dong Victus proudly said, Your evil, your evil deeds end now. Or is it better as, we've uncovered your vile plan? Lindsay's trying to write something on the go, but she interrupts herself and looks up. Oh, your highness. We have unbelievably, terribly important news. We managed to find out, discover, invent. Well, here. Lindsay points to the storyteller. He'll tell you. The storyteller waits patiently until Lindsay finishes her ardent speech. I'll have to begin from afar to let you see what I saw with my blind eyes. The stolen lands are like a cradle in an abandoned house, in which the wind swings the skeleton of a child. No few newborn kingdoms have died here, just after taking their first breath. I have collected their stories, these precious stars that have been lost in the dust, and I begin to notice some commonalities. It's like a pattern that repeats across different embroideries, the handwriting of the same author across all their stories. One word here, another hint there. False visions, references to a mysterious patroness, lover, and mentor. Mentor. Tragic coincidences, strangely non-random. Peoples and countries were brought to destruction along different roads, but behind them, there always stood the same ominous shadow. And we know what that shadow is. Nerissa. The name sounds ominous even in the mouth of a restless bard. The evil nymph who sent monsters to our lands and did all that stuff to Tristian. But that's not even the most important thing. Most importantly, if you help us a bit, we can get her. Let's start from the beginning. 
How'd you even come up with this? Well, it all started with the fact that I really wanted to listen to the storyteller's stories. I've been following him for a long, long time, and asked, and told him about our adventures, and sometimes I just sat beside him and we chatted. Finally, after I told him about the DeFay sisters and all the horrors of the abandoned castle, he noticed that the story seemed strangely familiar to ones he'd heard before. And what exactly are you going to do? The bards know how to send messages through dreams. I try not to use it. For some reason, people got mad when I appeared in their dreams to read my new poems. Well, the storyteller came up with a ritual based on that spell. We'll collect everything connected to Nerissa. Everything, starting with her every track in the abandoned castle. After gathering everything, we'll unite this ability to tell stories with my ability to travel into dreams. So we'll be able to enter Nerissa's dream. Do we still have that amulet with the string of hair that she gave you before the battle with the Stag Lord? That'd be great. That'll let us finish all the preparations much faster and easier. And what will we achieve by this? We'll learn all of her evil secrets. The ritual let us see her hidden thoughts and dreams. Well, theoretically. It's not like anyone's ever done this before. It can be dang- It can be dangerous, the storyteller says quietly. In dreams, monsters are more terrible than those we meet in the real world. But I urge you not to neglect this chance, King. You are opposed by a powerful enemy, one who has destroyed dozens of kingdoms and empires. If you do not meet her face to face, do not discover her weaknesses. Your country will end up just another of my stories. Fine. I order you to be, I order you to be provided with everything you need. Get me results. Come to me after we finish the preparations. But remember that I cannot send anyone except you and Lindsay into Nerissa's dream world. Whatever you have to face, you have to overcome together, and the path will likely be difficult. So I don't know if I saw that amulet. I was just, I thought I remembered it being the Stag Lord's broken amulet, but it's the um, it's the one she gives you. Uh, the I don't think anyone has it equipped, do they? Here it is. Okay, we'll take that off of her then. I can have that. Also, I need to level everybody up. We'll save that for next episode. We have a handful of things we need to take care of. For now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.